Ali Sadiq in the Zoom room. He's coming to the Uptown this weekend on Friday the 13th. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, again, again. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Okay, so are you superstitious? Not at all. Okay, because I was going to say, you're going to come into Kansas City on Friday the 13th. I've never had anything bad happen on Friday the 13th, so it doesn't apply to me, but I just didn't know about you. So I hope y'all have a good tattoo artist because I, I, I've i been looking to get a tattoo on Friday the 13th for a long time. You want to know what? At the Uptown Theater, I'm pretty sure that like a few doors down, there is a tattoo parlor that you can go to and get tatted up. What are you going to get tatted? Um, Probably just 13. Just give me a, a black 13. Oh, no, I, I think I need to get a, a hollow heart on my on somewhere on my body because I have three hearts. That's all filled in. I think I need to get a hollow one. A hollow heart. Yes. Where are you gonna get it? Like a tramp stamp? <laughs> uh no, nah, I wouldn't put nothing on on, on the small of my back. <laughs> that, <laughs> I'm a grown man. I, I'm probably on my arm somewhere. Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay, so this tour is called I Got a Story to Tell. Now, you had some great stories for me the last time I spoke to you. What type of stories are you talking about this time? Oh, this this is uh, the um the tour of parenthood. This is what these are these, these are these stories. You know, um I I have children and the the all of them different, you know, and you you know I have my older kids and I think I was set. Now I have a, a two different sets of children after that. So it's three sets, it's three age groups. I have a fully grown group. I have a teenage group. Then I have a small infant group. Okay. You're talking about groups. Are you talking about like you have nine kids? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, what is going on? Yeah. I had to go on do not disturb because people going to keep calling. <laughs> and it's man. one it's one I, it's one of them things you forget all the time you're like hey people just like people remember that you, uh people know that you're doing an interview so you got to put it on do not disturb airplane mode and don't call me and then put a meme on there like do not call how, how you came up with nine because i said i had um different age group that that could be one each how, how, how you come up with nine because you said a group so when i think of a group a group is like three so i'm like okay three three and three nine how many kids you have a lot how many is a lot nine <laughs> i'm good i just want to know how you came up with nine that's what i wanted to know how you came i'm up that nine. good look i'm the one look I do talk for a living, but I pay attention to body language and context clues. So I don't ask too many, like I'm not an interrogator when I'm not doing an interview. Like I, there's <laughs> certain people that when they speak to you, they interrogate you. And that bothers me. Like, stop asking me so many questions. This is a conversation, not an interview. And so <laughs> I, I'm just a really good listener. And you did, you spot on, you are spot on. Yeah. So this is the, the exploration of, you know, being a a father uh, a lot of times over. So, you know, those are these stories and what goes on in, in my home and what goes on in my career and things with my family. You know, not, not a lot of people, you know, got um got an opportunity to have their father sign they, they divorce papers for their mom. You're like, what? Like, what y'all need me to do? <laughs> so you signed your mom's divorce papers? No, my mom had me go out of town to get my father to sign the divorce papers. So you they've been they've been separated since I was like six. I, like, I thought they was already divorced. Okay, well that was a surprise to you. Did your mom want to get remarried? <laughs> Is that why? No, uh, she just didn't want to. He, they supposed to be divorced, but they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. She wanted to be divorced. They've okay. been divorced. Well, I would like, just say I, if you've been going on like this for so long, you might as well just keep it up. It, no, nah, she didn't <laughs> want to bear at the bury him. That ain't her job. Oh, she like, okay. I need him to sign these papers. Okay. My mom been trying to, my mom been trying to get these papers signed, so it's a whole, it's a whole deal. I didn't know that's what she wanted when she called me over. I was like, I thought she was fixing me something to eat. Okay. But, 
<laughs> she, she, sent, she sent me on a mission. <laughs> well, she probably fixed you something to eat. And she was like, but there's a stipulation. Here's these papers that you got to deliver for me in person. No, nothing to eat. Just a mission. Okay. <laughs> just just now, a mission. Now, let me ask you, with your three group of kids, um, what's the difference between your new age kids versus your older kids? That, that's what people have to come to the show to see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ah, you tried to get the you tried to get the show in the interview. Ain't happening. Well, I did. I didn't know that, that was a part of the interview. You, said, I'm a little bit psychic, I guess. That's a part of the. That's a part of the story that I'm telling. So they got to be a part of the show. They got to come to the show to see the difference between the difference. Between okay, those, so those age groups. Okay, those are the, so, the, those are the stories. So, and you're moving on up too, because you typically come to the um, improv or the funny bone, and now you're at the Uptown. So you're at the Uptown Theater. What's the difference when you do theaters versus a comedy club, or is it all the same to you? Um, theaters and clubs are different. People who come to see you in a in a theater are very intentional. People who come to see you in a club may have just stumbled up on that, or somebody may have just, you know, they may have just stopped by and like, oh, who's performing here tonight? You, nobody does it at a theater. Nobody, oh, who's performing tonight? They, it's very intentional. So that's the difference. And it is a a testament of people. The comedy club is is so sporadic, you know. It, it's it's a um, accomplishment, but the theater is it's the intent is different. People are definitely coming to hear what you have to say. They don't. It's not about well, who's opening for him. When people ask you that and you in a theater, you like it's really insulting because nobody comes to the theater to see a I'm not on I'm not on a group tour. I'm on by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, you know, it's just so much different. It, and and the the work is the workload is different. You know, uh, a, a comedy club stage is what, maybe five feet. Mm -hmm. I am on a 50 to 60 foot stage you know and wow. you got to play both sides of the room so it, it's just the the being physical and the, the physicality of it is is totally different mm -hmm. you know yeah so this is the eighth stop on the tour so what's something that has surprised you what's the what's the eighth stop on the tour I, I looked at it. The um, I got a story to tell. Tour. It says that Kansas City is the eighth stop on the tour. This is the second. This is the second half of the. No, this is like stop number seventy something. <laughs> me, I. You know, I, I we, just we've read, been on tour, we've been I, on tour I, since January the second of last year. Oh, okay. Well, I saw what you posted on your Instagram, and it had Kansas City as the eighth listed. So that's yeah, why this I thought is, it was the yeah, this stop. Is, yeah, this is the second. This is the second half. This this is um from September to December the fourteenth. Yeah, this is the end wrapping up the the year. We've been on yeah we've been on tour since January the second every week. And this is yeah this is stop numbers like seventy. Yeah, I, I no I took I took and I took July off. I took the whole month of July <laughs> off. Um. Cause we would have rolled all the way through July, so no, this is this is starting back up. This is the eighth show of starting back up, and I in August we we did we did every weekend in August, um, yeah, just gearing back up to come back to the come back to the um the theaters, which is a uh, when you take a month off. I usually could just come back in a in a in a comedy club because I'm just really just working out a theater there was no way for me to come back being off of off a whole month and then come right back to the um the theaters my time it would have been off so no 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 disrespect to your counting because you definitely counted right but you count do you you didn't count the first half the first half was the first half was something and I, if i if i tell you when you get to show number 30 you like you thinking you like hey, and you ask you ask how many and your mind is thirty you thinking oh it's definitely thirty then you go ask hey what show is this and they're like 
18. You're like, what? No, it's not. No, it's not 18. Like, and then so this run right here is gonna be is gonna be something, you know, every every weekend. Every weekend we in the we in somebody's theater. So no, Kansas City, I am um I'm geared up and ready. Um the stories are different. I don't know when the last time I was in Kansas City. Um oh I think last year. Last mm -hmm. year I think I was in the club last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you avoid burnout though? Since you're on tour 78th show here in Kansas City. Yeah, um, I take off a month and then I take off two weeks sporadically throughout the um the course of the tour. You know, um December 14th is the last the last um weekend in this on this particular stretch, and I'll take off the rest of December. And then we'll start back up um, in January. We already have the routing for the the next hundred cities. So, you know, and plus we're getting ready to shoot two new specials in Dallas at the Majestic. Um, what else we doing? I, I, I think I can't. I don't think I'm burnt out because of the. The ambition of what I'm trying to put out. Mm -hmm. You know, I think my my ambition is keeping me from being burnt out. I find something new to do in stand up all the time and being independent. It gives me that leeway to do whatever I want. There's no way in the world if I would with a network. I could have put out four specials within two years, really five specials within two years. Right. Because you just you dropped know? the fourth part to your special in June, June the 13th. That's when. um the domino effect, Father. pins and needles, that dropped. Father's Day, yeah. Father's so we Day. Dropped Mother's, we dropped Mother's Day. Um, three was on Mother's Day. Four was on Father's Day. Okay. And so since you're already gearing up for your new special, like when are you planning on dropping it for 2025? Um, We'll see. You know, because this, this one is a big one. This is a, this is a big one. This is the first... Um, like traditional theater show, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's all the lights and glamour. You know, it's not like the the last one with the with the screen changing and being a little more uh, modern. This is a classic look, and I'm shooting that one on the fifth, and then I'm shooting another one on the sixth, a di different material. And we may be shooting two on the sixth, so we may shoot three specials in the same weekend. Um, I had okay, three so different outfits. I, I feel like your tone changed when you were talking about that special. Is that your favorite one thus far? Which one? This no, one. No favorite. That you're favorite this three. Domino Effect three is my favorite. My favorite special thus far. Okay, and that's the one Domino that just Mother's Day. I, I, on Mother's Day, I laugh out loud, like like it's not like it's a different person. I I love three, three okay. is so funny to me. It's like it's three. I think three is if people saw Prison Ride, which is effectively known as Mexican on Boots. It three is kind of like you understand why and how Mexican on Boots happened because I was so oblivious to <laughs> being incarcerated. Like this is, that's why it's called the first day of school. Cause being in the streets, being a, being hood in the streets is different than being incarcerated. Cause you like, you like the only one, like you are one of the few guys that's like a bad actor. Most people are good. But in, in when you in jail, like you know, everybody here is a is a bad actor. It, there's no you don't have to think about it. Like, <laughs> like and it's so over your head. Like, is he like what are we trying to do? Like, is he serious? He's like it, it was. I just enjoy watching my growth from three to four. Like I was like I'm a I was a totally different guy mm -hmm. by the time I got to four. I, mean, I was like yo, this dude is so juvenile the dude dude said i slapped his sister i had no i like i did not slap your sister i ain't never even slapped no woman ever like, <laughs> so, 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 I'm like are you really trying to pick a fight with me over nothing 
And then when I really wanted to fight, they was like, yo, man, we ain't had nothing else to do, man. We was just messing with you. It was like, it, it, I, I laugh at that three all the time. Three is very good to me. So that's your favorite kid out of all your comedy specials. That is the that is the favorite kid. That okay. is that. So since you have nine kids though, and you're always working, are you gonna put those kids to work? Because to me, what's the point in having all the kids if you can't get free labor? Uh, the difference between, um, and that's and this is a part of the special that's getting ready to come out. The benefit of my children having me as a as a parent is they have the opportunity to do whatever they want to do and their life and our life and our family is not contingent on them being anything. You know, so I'm not parenting from a, a position. I'm not Joe Jackson parenting where y'all got to become something because the family needs you to become something. We good. You know, that's the that's the benefit of having a parent like me. Right. I don't need you to be anything. You you live live your life. And whatever you become is what you become. You know, if you don't have to go anywhere, it's no stress on you in your life to, oh, you must become something because I need you to. No, we good. <laughs> and live their life like, with their kids. Huh? That, I said they can just live their life and be kids. Yeah, be be ten. Be ten. You know that's the, that's the the thing because I've never really been ten. Right. You know just I was the number, there. but yeah, I was the number, but I wasn't. I didn't have that life of a ten year old. You know, so that's the benefit of my children having me as a parent. I don't need them for anything. But to but to grow up and be whatever good person that they want to be. So That's I saw all they you, I, I saw your daughter as an ice skater. Does she get you out there on the ice? No, that's her thing. You okay. know, so I'm I'm just I'm just a um a, a standby facilitator. You know, I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the bag. <laughs> that's the that's that's I'm I and the chauffeur and you know, the concierge, hey, what you need? You need food? Oh, okay. And I'm off. You know, that this that that's the benefit of being a, a parent. You know, you're watching your kids grow in something and you don't actually have to participate to have the, the common the common ground. Hey, if I need to get out there on the ice with you, I can. But I it's more for it's more for you because the benefit of this. If you fall, you just fall. If I fall and hurt something now, now I need y'all to work. Now, now you now it's Joe Jackson time. Right. Get out there. You see, you see, you see what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so you just let her do her thing. Now, what if one yeah. of your kids said that they wanted to be a comedian? Would you support that? I'm gonna support whatever they choose to be. Okay. They, I they don't have a they don't have a final destination with me in life is is I'm here for the journey. You know, you may you may be a flute player. You know what I'm saying? One year and then next year, you know, you decide you wanna you want to be a surfer in Maui. Hey man, I guess we going to Maui. I'm I'm easy going with, with them in their life. You know, because I I I just want them to live it to the fullest and take advantage of having this type of parent. You know this you know, I didn't. I didn't have this type of parent. You know that. <laughs> you do. You say what? You want what? Yeah, like I've been working since I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. so not. I just want them to be free, as free as they could possibly be, and th to have that that experience and to have a different. Uh, I think I'm very troubled by everybody being from the hood. Like everybody, like everybody was from the hood. Like I, I know it was people in my family, black people that they're not from the hood. They're not even hood. Right. So the narrative of everybody being hood bothers me. So I definitely don't want my children to even have that, that even that conversation. 
or I grew up, man, my, my kids don't have no I was hungry conversation. If the only reason, the only way that you hungry is because you didn't go in the kitchen. Right. And then it's the, the the we we uh we grew up without. No, no, you know, it sure didn't. Just like when I tell my story, I always say I never had to sell drugs. My mama had a job. Because I don't want that narrative of if like my mom was some destitute person. No, I was I was in the streets being ridiculous. My mom had a job. My mom was building computers at the time for this computer company called Ferranti. Like, my dad was a, been an entrepreneur that actually had a carrier service and he sold cocaine, powder cocaine. He never <laughs> sold crack. Like, <laughs> I gotta so, keep, you got to separate the two. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to let people know, man, everybody don't come from this this impoverished, you know, life. Well, I come from the ghetto. No, I did not come from the ghetto. I'm right. not even going to put that on my, pe on my people. I did not come from the ghetto. Did not. Right. There's just choices <laughs> so, that you made, but you're breaking generational. Well, you're breaking generational curses. You said that your parents always had, you know, a good foundation for you, but you're just making sure that your kids don't go down the same route that you did. Yeah, and and my route was based upon being outside, you know, not having the the enough confidence just to be my own person, you know, being outside. And well, now you don't and, have to and, worry about that because kids don't even go outside anymore. So <laughs> yeah, my kid, my kids still go outside. We live in a in a pretty nice neighborhood. They they it's easy for me to be driving up the street seeing my kids walking from the park of, you know, or going to the park of my son fishing in the lake. Cause we, we, we stay in an area that got like seven lakes with fish in them. So you go fishing and that it's one of them things that they just live in a different life than what I grew up living, which is perfect. It was, it's just absolutely. It, this, that's the blessing in having a career. That's the blessing of me being determined not to, be a part of this recidivative rate of going in and out of incarceration that I to grow up and be able to see my family or grow up and having a family. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the whole other thing, actually having a family. You know, that that, that you know, a big one that that I that I that I support wholeheartedly, whatever they want to do, whatever they want to do. And Sometimes people try to make it seem like when you a black man and you got a, a lot of kids, like something wrong. You're like, and I'd be like, man, the audacity of people, because I ain't asked nobody for nothing. I've never asked anybody for nothing. My kids ain't never wanted for nothing. Since I've been alive, they ain't never wanted for nothing. So they they look at people like, why you only had what y'all was y'all was poor or something? You only you could only for, afford two children, like because they they if that's if they. If they was if they had that attitude, they attitude is you have two kids, you have three kids, you have one kid. Okay, fine. We have a bigger family. He comes from a big family. His mom comes from not from ten. You know what I'm saying? It, we 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 big family people, you know. And it's not and it's not the the run of the mill typical thing. Well, oh, you got all these children running around. No, I got all these children running around the world living their life. That, that's a, that's sponsored that's sponsored by their father right and and you maybe can... and maybe that's and maybe that's hard for people to stomach and thinking that only and what's crazy is I don't even understand why it's hard to stomach because they'll watch they'll watch a TV show with a with the lighter hue having the great eight and the 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 quintuplets, the quintuplets, they they watch them shows with, with other folks but they right, but I, and, I, and I don't know your situation, but I think that a majority of the reason why people are judging when people have all the kids is because in Nick Cannon's sense, NBA young boy, they have 10 baby mamas and 12 kids like that's But the point, is, but the point is, they they probably, they might want to stop judging grown people that's in their 50s by children's standards. That's that may be that may be the thing, because when I think of when I think of adults, I don't think of children. Maybe that maybe that's the 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 case. I tell people all the time: if you think that you get your news from Twitter, and me and you are the same, then you you're ridiculous. I still read the paper, I still watch the I still watch the news. 
and I don't watch this. I watch the BBC as well as other world news. I think that most people judge people on childish things. Everybody's on the internet. No, everybody's not. Everybody don't even have the internet. Maybe you may want to think of think of that. People people judge people based upon their own their own thing. Like that's what you're doing. Why would why would you judge somebody? This is that that's why because I've asked people this. Why would you judge me according to a child's standards? And this was based on a conversation of um me black men hating black women. I said. Where is this coming from? Well, on the internet. Well, I'm not on the internet. Do you understand? Me and my friends, we're 50, 60 years old. We're not on the internet bashing women. Right. Makes no, you're, you're judging me based upon a child. My, if my son is 34, if my brother, my brother's 34, I'm 50. Me and him, what he thinks and what I think are two totally different things. Right. And for somebody to think that people start having children based upon Nick Cannon and NBA young boy, then they're, they're ridiculous. No, I don't the, think that. The, I, I, the, the, thing is this, the thing is this, what, why was it that same, that same ideology based upon Joe Jackson? Which he have, had, he had one one. Which have, but watch this. But he had a bunch of kids. They didn't know he had, but he had more kids than just his one wife. Now, for me, being the public, I didn't know that. I didn't grow up in that era. I just know Michael Jack. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is, with the debarges, it's people who already always had large families. People didn't have large families just based upon having a bunch of children. So if they think that somebody having a bunch of children's uh, kids' moms is the only way for you to have a bunch of children, it's just this thing. But I'll say the only people that get that are black men. White men don't have to. White men are not judged by what's going on with Nick Cannon or NBA Young Boy. And no, and those and those are the facts. And whether they and whether they have um four four women that they have children by, whether they was married to them or not married to them. Nobody's judging them based upon NBA. They don't. They don't even think of them. They don't even think of Nick Cannon, an NBA young boy, when you talk about um, white men and their children, or Hispanic men, or Italian men, or any other uh, ethnic group. Okay. But a fifty-year-old, a fifty-year-old black man, or a fifty-five-year-old black man, will get judged by some what what some kids are doing. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I'm just, but and it's not. This is not directed towards you. This is directed towards the people who who think that. Right, because I came in judgment free. I just was the one who was able to guess how many kids there was. With and the people don't have to guess because they they they've heard me say it a thousand times. It's not like it's a secret. Okay, <laughs> <It> <laughs> that's true. It ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a surprise to people. But once again, we don't live our life in the public either. Right. People don't. Well, people don't. People don't even know. They uh, find out afterwards. Oh, hey man, I this I got this wonderful chef that came by X Y Z and did this. Oh, what's her name? What's the chef's name? X Y and Z. I'm like, oh, my daughter. Oh, that's your daughter. Oh, I saw your. your oh, that's my oldest son. Didn't even didn't didn't say nothing because they live in their life unattached to who their father is. They like yo. Don't judge me based on who my father is. Don't even be cool with me based on who my father is. Be cool with me based on my own accolades. And that's how they and that's how they live. But they know they got the full, the full backing of their father. And that's we all live that different. In, we, we live different in, in, in Texas than I'm not a part of the 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 Atlanta or the New York or the LA job that goes on at the in the in the public eye we i live in houston well life is well life is simple and and we don't get we don't get judged based upon what somebody what another city does we our own people right and that and, that, and that's how we and that's how we like to keep it well you just gotta be you and do your thing <laughs> and <laughs> And I know that people yeah. can go out and get those tickets Friday the 13th at the Uptown Theater. 
I got a story to tell. You told me a story and I know you got many more to tell on that uh, on that stage at the Uptown. Oh, Uptown is going to be crazy. I can't wait to get there. We're going to have a we're going to have a ball. Um, I'm going to tell people about some surprise. I may have some surprise, some surprise stories that I, I hadn't even um thought about telling yet. But I got a, I got a lot of got a lot of can in the can for Kansas City. And what, what's that? What's that Gates barbecue out there? Gates barbecue. Yes, sir. Yeah, I like they fish. Okay, so he's got a taste for Gates Barbecue, so make sure that, that uh, Gates Barbecue, a fish platter. I don't know if that even exists, but they can make it exist <laughs> just for you. No, he is, he's brought it to he's brought it to the club with me before. They they have a fish, and I get they fish and they potato salad. Okay, so you know what's up. You yeah, know what's up for the kids in the club. That's right. All right. Well, Ali, I'm gonna I'm wrapping it up with you. I appreciate all your time. Anything else that you want? people to know you got a special coming out your show on friday what else that's it i ain't got nothing else for the people okay but you got uh, a whole nothing, lot more to I say got, on stage nothing, nothing else for the people <laughs> i'm done with the people <laughs> thank you all for right having me. well i appreciate you thank you so much see you on friday Bye -bye. all right see you friday